Don't say those words. Am I live or not live? You're live now. I'm live now. I wasn't live, then I wasn't, then I was, then I wasn't, then it was, yeah. My broad audio wasn't broadcasting, so, so, so let's, so let's do this again. Three, two. Hey everybody, Kent Martz here. It's Wednesday and that makes it First Light Chronicles here on Amazon Live. We're going to have some cool products today. We're going to be talking about some telescopes and a red light flashlight, maybe a planetosphere and a moon map. We're going to move through. We're running a little bit behind because I wasn't paying attention to the time, but here we are. So we have, first off, the First Light reflect, Refracting Telescope, Reflector. Reflector. The first light refract. Ref, now I can't say it. The first light, achromatic, 80, 102 millimeter by 600 millimeter focal length uh, telescope. This is a standard telescope, just like you think of when you think about a telescope. It's got an eyepiece in the back that you look through. A lens up here that brings things to focus back here in the back. It's a standard telescope, just like you're used to. This one comes with a diagonal, and this diagonal has a mirror in here that is a 90 degree mirror and so it reflects things up so instead of having to get down here if you had to look at something in the sky you have to get down on your knees it's very difficult to look through the telescope but with a diagonal in there and then an eyepiece looking in the telescope up over your head or even at the horizon becomes a very simple task it's real simple you simply look in the telescope and turn the focusing knob until it gets into focus and you move it back and forth until you find the perfect focus for your eye and there you go. You've got the first light AR, 102 millimeter, 640 millimeter focal length telescope focus. Now the 102 millimeters describes the aperture. It's how much light that telescope pulls in and it squishes down to where it goes into your eye, okay? And the second number, 640, means it has a 640 millimeter Focal length. We got a question coming in, I think. Hello. Oh, Mike Overacker. Hello, Kent and all. Hello, Mike. Thanks for joining us here. We appreciate you very much. So, the telescope is, uh, uh, you know, it takes a little bit of skill to learn how to use a telescope. Making it easier with this telescope is the mount. It is a simple left, right, up, and down mount nothing to it you simply look up in the sky and move the telescope left and right and up and down left and right in the telescope world is called azimuth and up and down is called altitude so it's an alt as mount okay it's a left right up and down a fancy uh, heavier duty than a typical um, camera tripod looks a little different but works exactly the same way okay so one skill you have to lose, lose, use, is to get the red dot finder, which is right here. I'll show it to you. You can take it off. Right there it is. A simple device. Just slides in and tighten down the set screw to hold it in place. You turn it on, and it projects a little red dot on a screen right there in the very front of the red dot finder. And best to do this in the evening uh, when you can see the red dot in bright sunlight during the day. Hard to do. And you want to do this align it on something terrestrial, something that's on the earth. It's a lot easier to do than something up in the sky because if you wait for it to get dark, all those stars are moving to the west. When in reality, all of us are moving to the east, rotating to the east, but it makes the sky look like it's going west from our position of relativity. So, real simple, and this works for every telescope with a red dot finder. This is how it works, okay? Boy, that shot's hot, Paul. Uh, this this is how it all works. You take your red dot finder and you get it turned on. You look in the telescope and you want to find something that in our direction, say 300 yards. I recommend miles. Miles are better than yards and yards are better than feet. If you're less than 300 yards away, you're not going to get a good polar, a good alignment. So you need to work on this a little bit. Find something that's far away and you're going to move it until... Whatever it is you're looking at is in the center of the IP. Say you have a tree line and there's one dead tree or a real tall tree and then another, this goes back down and it's normal. Really easy to find that tree line and then move the telescope until you find that tree centered up in, your eye, in the eyepiece. Then you turn your red dot on and you use these two knobs right here. 
there's a left right that moves the red dot left and right and another one that moves it up and down. And you simply very carefully turn those until you get the red dot, we'll say on the very top of the tree where you're looking at. You're gonna look in the eyepiece again to make sure, because it's possible you move the telescope. Well, you simply move it back and get it centered up and carefully move the left right up down for the red dot. And you move those until the red dot and the eyepiece both are looking at the same thing. Now you've got a really good rough alignment. If the moon's up, real simple, move the telescope to the moon. You then look through the red uh, dot uh, finder, and it's a zero power. You can use it with both eyes. It makes it pretty easy. You're going to move the, red dot the telescope with the red dot finder until the red dot's on the moon, and then look in the eyepiece. Now, if you've done a decent job, the moon's going to be in the eyepiece. You might have to move it a little bit if you did something too close or didn't get it lined up real good. You're going to find the moon, center it up in the eyepiece, and now readjust the red dot finder again. Now your red dot finder is lined up with what your telescope's looking at, making finding stuff up in the sky so much easier, right? You'd think that you could look at the eyepiece and find something the size of the moon. It's a very difficult thing, but that red dot finder, once you get aligned, makes it really, really easy to uh, find the things up in the sky that you're looking for. Uh, the first light series of telescopes from Explore Scientific are designed with beginners in mind. Uh, they're inexpensive, uh, easy to get started. They're real telescopes. They work well. They have real mounts. Uh, they're going to give you a good first experience with a telescope if you've never had a telescope before. And that's why we recommend these first light you know, first light means the first, in telescope world often, refers to the first time you look through a telescope, that's first light for that telescope. Well, if you're looking through a telescope for the first time, it made sense to name them first light series of telescopes. Now, I'm going to step off camera just for a second and maneuver over here so I can get to another telescope. Now, this telescope is on the same kind of mount, a very simple left, right, up, down. Is that pretty good? A very simple left, right, up, down tripod. It's called the Twilight Nano. This telescope on here is a little bit different of a telescope. The previous one, the light just went through and came out the back, had a very long tube. This telescope, bigger around, it's 127 millimeters five inches in diameter, and it's a very short tube. Well, you're going to think that this telescope doesn't have as much magnification as the one we just looked at. Well, this telescope has a big secret hiding inside. That big secret hiding inside is that. This corrector plate up here in front, there's a piece of glass right here. The other telescope didn't have, gla didn't have any glass until you get down into the telescope. This has what's called a corrector plate that starts bending the light. Back here in the back, there's a curved mirror that really starts bending the light. And then back here in the front, you see that silver dot right there? Or the, is it black or silver on this one? Sort of silver. Silver black one right there. Uh, uh, there, there you go. On the back side of that big circle in the middle is a mirror, right? And so that light hits that mirror and then reflects it back towards the end of the telescope where it comes out of the back of the telescope and goes into the focuser and goes into the eyepiece and goes into your eye where you can focus it with this little focuser right here. This telescope, remember the other one we just looked at, had a focal length of 640 millimeters. This telescope, while much shorter, has a longer focal length, three times as long. This telescope has a focal length of 1,900 millimeters. The other one, 8, 16, 24, okay, not 3, two and a half times uh, longer than uh, the other telescope in a smaller package. So focal length coupled with an eyepiece is the function of magnification. If you take the eyepiece, and the, these all come with the same eyepiece, they're a 25 millimeter super plossal eyepiece right here is one. It's got our smartphone adapter, which all of the first light telescopes come with. So this has much longer focal length. If you take this eyepiece and put it in the other telescope, you're not going to get as much magnification because magnification is a function of the focal length 
and the eyepiece. So we change the focal length to shorter, it's less magnification. We change it to longer, it's more magnification when you're using the same eyepiece. Now, as you can see, this has a red dot finder on it too. A little bit different, but works exactly the same way. You simply find something in your eyepiece that you can find easily, turn a red dot on, move the red dot until it lines up. Bingo, you're now ready to look through the telescope and move it left, right, up and down until you get the thing you're looking at centered up in the red dot. And if you've done a good job, look in the eyepiece, there it is. So uh, it comes with, a, obviously, a, a lens cover that we don't have on there. Comes with the eyepiece that we have and comes with this handy, really easy to use smartphone adapter. So this smartphone adapter has little suction cups, octopus-like suction cups right there. And you can stick a phone onto it. Now, my smartphone, I have to take the out of the case to do it because it won't stick well to the case. And I always wet these a little bit, sir. Turn the scope sideways when you do this. Out of the way. There you go. So I wet these a little bit so they'll stick to the back of my, cam my, my smartphone. And it comes with a piece of elastic that goes around and helps hold the phone on, always use that elastic. How do you put it together? Real simple, just like this. You loosen up the set screw, you drop your eyepiece in. Are we on camera or not? No. Can you see that? Is that good enough? There we go. Remote camera operator. Yeah, there is. He's sitting down and running the thing. That's what remote control cameras are for. There we go. All right, so. So you get your adapter, you loosen the set screw, and you just drop in the eyepiece, and I always put it down to where the uh, little rubber on the eyepiece is even with the, the uh, adapter. And now you just turn your camera on and move in until you match up the circle of the camera with the circle of the eyepiece. You stick it down, you put the red, the uh, red, the elastic cord on, and now you're ready to put it into your telescope and start taking pictures with your own smartphone. Now, because everything's moving, you gotta be pretty quick about taking those pictures and you're gonna have to learn how to move the telescope to follow things across the sky. Oh, that That's a skill. All the way. That's a no, skill. A That's a skill you're gonna have to learn how to keep moving the telescope up and down and left and right. So you just move it and everything in the sky is moving in a gentle arc. Well, you can't move this one in a gentle arc, so you're going to have to go like right and down and right and down and right and down and right and down. It's a skill to learn. You just got to work on a little bit. It's just like if you decide to go fishing and never been fishing before, you're going to have to learn how to cast, how to bait the hook, where to go fishing, all sorts of things. Same skills you got to have for, astro for astronomy. Now I'm going to show you the last telescope. It too is a different telescope and it's on a different mount altogether. Well, thank you, Tyler. This one, and I'm gonna have to position this so we can, gonna hit a little bit, that's okay. This telescope is a Newtonian telescope. So we've gone from a standard refractor to a, to a Maxitov Cassegrain reflector where it has a bunch of mirrors to this one, which is a Newtonian. Now there's no, up here in the front, there's no piece of glass like in a Maxitoff, but there is a little mirror down here. So the light comes in the bottom of the telescope, comes in the telescope, hits a curved mirror in the bottom, which starts focusing it to a point. It hits this flat mirror that's down inside right there, reflects it out the side and into the eyepiece where you can focus it and get it to focus. Real simple concept. Uh, it's easy to use, big around, has a much shorter focal length. This has a focal length of only 500 millimeters, so you're not going to get a lot of magnification, but the things you're looking at are going to be bright because it's a big aperture. Uh, the longer the focal length, the darker things get in the Maxitov we looked at uh, before this one. Things are going to be a little bit darker because they have such a long focal length. So I want to thank the people who are out there watching, especially here on Amazon Live. Thank you for giving us your time. We hope you're enjoying what you're seeing. If you have any questions, feel free to use that chat function 
and ask us your question, make a comment, give us a shout out, a howdy, or if you're so compelled, click that follow button because, well, we appreciate it very much and we'll give you a thank you by name uh, for doing that. So let's talk about the mount real quick. The tripod it comes on is not the simple left, right, up and down tripod we just saw. This mount is a little bit more complicated, but it's much more powerful because remember how I told you things are moving across the sky in arcs? Well, this telescope is on a mount that moves across the sky in arcs, right? It has an axis right here that rotates, and it has an axis right here that rotates. So this axis, which I think of as, you know, left and right is sort of an up and down. That's called declination, declination, and this, ap this axis is called right ascension. It gets into some potentially higher math concepts and astronomy concepts that you don't have to master right now, but it's good to start hearing those things, right? This axis that we see right here, this axis mimics the rotational axis of the Earth. So what you have to do is... Set your latitude on the latitude scale over here. So if, like here in northwest Arkansas, we're at 36 degrees north. You set it to 36. If you're in the southern hemisphere at 36, you'd set it to 36. If you're at 42, you set it to 42. And then you point this axis right here north. I use a compass. It's real simple to do. You just have to make sure if you're using a smartphone to tell that smartphone, phone, smartphone compass to use true north, not hey everybody, Kent Martz here from Explore Scientific. Today I'm going to teach you how to polar line your telescope. Right until you have it pointed due north. So I think we're getting ready to show you a video of how to use a compass. So go ahead and go ahead and run that beautiful video. Ha has ugly old me in it in a blue shirt. Hey everybody, Kent Martz here from Explore Scientific. Today I'm going to teach you how to polar line your telescope using a broom. Why do you need to polar line? Well, with a telescope that has an equatorial mount, you have to get that equatorial axis lined up with the rotation of the Earth. And to do that, we're going to start with the tripod. We're going to decide which one of these legs is going to point north, and we're going to set the tripod down so that leg is pointed north. First thing I'm going to do is use a level to make sure my tripod is level, so if it's tipped one side or the other, that's going to cause your polar alignment to not be accurate. So we're going to use a level for that purpose. Then, we're going to take a compass, and just to make sure that I've got it pointed north, I'm going to use the compass, line up, and go, yep, that looks like it's pointed north. So here's what I'm going to do now. And this is where the broom comes in. The broom becomes a measurement device, if you will. So I'm going to put the broom on the ground with the tip of it right against the north leg of the tripod. And I'm going to back away. And I'm going to use the compass, I'm going to close one eye, and I'm going to use the compass to make sure that the broom is lined up with north, right? And so I can tell I'm off just a little bit, so I'm going to move the tripod just a little bit, and I'm going to turn the broom, and the broom is what I'm seeing that line with to line up. So closing one eye, now my broom is lined up perfectly to magnetic north. Right here is we're going to talk about something called magnetic declination. The magnetic north is not true north. The difference between true north and magnetic north can be off by as much as 15 or 16 degrees if you live on the east coast or west coast of the United States. Around the world it varies and you have to figure out what that is for where you live because if you point at magnetic north you're not going to be pointing at true north. You could be off by 15 degrees. Your go-to will never be accurate. So for this system to work, you have to know what that offset is and be able to program that into your compass. We're going to provide a link to a, a, a website and a video that talks about that a whole lot more. Now we're going to make sure that the tripod is not angled it wrong. I'm going to use a small tape measure and we're simply going to come down here and be careful not to move the broom and I'm going to measure the distance from the tripod leg to the center of the broom that is 400 and 70 centimeters. That way it is 470, a little 
I'm going to call that good. Actually, I'm going to move the tripod a couple of millimeters just like that. So now we know that we're lined up true north with that leg, and these two legs are the equal, are the equal distance from right here. So it's not pushed that way or that way. So now that we have the tripod with a good alignment to the north, we have to put the head on the mount. And that's going to entail this. We're going to be very careful when we do this because we don't want to move the tripod. We're going to put it on and simply screw on the polar head just like this. Remembering everything's going to the north. Now if you're in the southern hemisphere, you're going to do the same thing. You can do the same exact same in the southern hemisphere because it's not polar, it's polar alignment. We just don't use the star Polaris, which we're not using here. This is really good if you can't see Polaris or if it's daytime and you want to do some solo, solar viewing with a solar safe filter. So the last step of this process is to check the scale of your altitude, right? So we live at 36 degrees north and I am going to turn the altitude until it gets to 36 degrees north. I'm going to stop and that's it. With this system, using a broom, a compass, and a tape measure, you can achieve a good, decent starting polar alignment. Personally, I've used this. I've got an amazingly close polar alignment. There's ways that you can use to refine your polar alignment, specifically drift alignment, but it all starts with a good polar alignment. You can do this in the daytime. You can do this in the nighttime if you can't see Polaris. It works all the time. It's a good way to get started learning the process of polar alignment. Isn't that great? I hope you've enjoyed this video. For Explore Scientific, I'm Kent Martz. Get out there and start doing astronomy. And keep looking up. And there you go. That's how you can polar and get a good polar alignment. And don't have a polar scope. Polar alignment is how you do this mount. Once you get that polar alignment, when you find what you're looking for, and you same thing with the red dot, you just move it to what you want to look at. And once you get close, this mount has slow motion control knobs, and they're rubbery, they're flexible, and you can move the mount really gently, left and right, this way. And once you find it, get it centered on. If you've polar aligned really well, you can use the right ascension right here. I'll see, and you're going to turn it, and you're just going to follow the object all the way across the sky in a nice, smooth arc. Now, if you're polar lining this off a little bit, you're going to turn it in the right ascension. It's going to start going out of the eyepiece. Simply use the slow motion control knob on the declination axis and turn it, and there you go. You can keep it centered up in the telescope, and much easier then moving it left and right, up and down, over and over and over again, you can move this in a nice, gentle arc across the sky. All right, so real quick, planispheres. We have planispheres over in the carousel. You have to know where you're going in the sky. A planisphere is a great way to start. Um, I recommend planispheres and a red fla flashlight, which we also have over in the carousel today. You can, oh, somebody, Maryland started falling. Thank you, Maryland. Um, Looks like, I don't know what those, wow. two crabs, two, two person eating crabs are those sunflowers. Oh, crabs, they're crab, two crabs, two clams, and two sunflowers. Thank you, Marilyn, for the follow. We appreciate it very much. Planispheres are a road map. Just like you need a map to say go to, uh, from here to Maryland, to Annapolis. Oh, if you don't know where Annapolis is, and you're in the middle of the United States, it's going to be a challenge to find Annapolis. If you don't know where the Big Dipper is, it's going to be a challenge to find the Big Dipper. And if you don't know where Andromeda is, you're probably not going to find the Andromeda Galaxy. A planisphere gives you a road map to what's in the sky. They're real simple to use. I'm just going to show you real quick how to use it. You find the month on the outside ring, which is right here and you match it up with the time. So if we're going to go out tonight on the 31st and we're going to go out at 9 o'clock, bingo, right there is what the northern sky looks like. Right here you're going to find out that, and the cool thing about it is 
you got to turn it over because north is there, west is here. So you're going to find out the Big Dipper is right there. And you can look up in the sky and find the Big Dipper. Now, the planet sphere I'm holding is a Wiltarian multi-sided, multi-two-sided, multi-latitude planet sphere. So this works from zero degrees north all the way up to 60 degrees north, encompassing basically everybody who lives in the northern hemisphere. And very cool. It has the northern part of the sky on one side and the southern part of the sky on the other side. So you get much bigger detail. If they tried to cram all this into such a small planet sphere, the detail of the whole sky would be very difficult to see. Black this Eyed makes Susan it easier to see. Sir? Called black Eyed Susan. Oh, black-eyed Susans. Crabs, oysters, and black-eyed Susans. Thank you. Uh, black-eyed Susans are not sunflowers. They're black-eyed Susans, much smaller, much smaller, and they don't produce seeds like sunflower seeds. Okay. They're, they're about, most black-eyed Susans are about that big. They look like a sunflower, maybe a wild sunflower, but they're black-eyed Susans. Thank you very much, uh, Maryland, for that. And now you've got me craving seafood and uh, with sunflower seeds on top of it, weirdly. I don't know if that's a, no, because Paul threw out f sunflower seeds and now I've got that on my brain. So anyway, that's going to wrap up the show for the day. We appreciate everyone who's watched. We love to have feedback and comments. We'll, we'll be back. Say again. Yeah, go over to the carousel. There's a couple items over there we didn't talk about. Moon maps, solar safe, sun filters that you can put on any one of our telescopes or a telescope you already have and can safely look at the sun. We have eyepieces over in our store uh, go to the Explore Scientific Store here on Amazon, and you can find a veritable treasure trove of astronomical gear and other science toys and things like that. Ah, Maryland says, state flower of Maryland. Yeah, very good. Thank is you. It maybe, is it Maryland? That's what she says. She, he, uh, we say Maryland because it has Mary in it. Maryland could very easily be a man. So... So not going to, in this day and time, we're just going to say, John. Thank you, John. We appreciate it very much. I uh, hope you fought, keep coming back tomorrow. And every day we generally are on at 3 o'clock uh, talking about either astronomy or binoculars or science things. So the lineup for the shows are Wednesday's First Light Chronicles. Thursday's is a birding show called On the Wing. Friday is Focus on Astrophotography. Monday is... Uh, how do you know? We're going to uh, rebrand re that as a new show. Uh, I don't know, science something. Who knows? <laughs> uh, we've been talking about it. And Tuesday is a, uh, I call it Fun Day Tuesday, learning through education or education through fun or yeah. something. There we go. So anyway, 3 o'clock every day. We're going to sign off. i uh, got another show to do and get ready for. We appreciate everybody watching. And we will see you tomorrow on Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday. I thought yesterday was Friday, and the, our lady who works in the office next to me thought the same thing. That has messed up my week. We'll see you tomorrow on Thursday at 3 o'clock for On the Wing. Thank you for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.